Welcome back everyone for today's video. We are going to be taking a look at my matchup in the fourth round here in the FIDE World Cup being held in Baku, Azerbaijan. Now, as you guys know, I drew the first game yesterday with the white pieces. Today is game number two, potentially a very tense situation because if I lose today, I am eliminated. Of course, if I draw, we go to tie breaks. And if I win, I am through to the next round. So let's jump right into the action. So Prague opens with C4, playing the classic English opening, which is what I played yesterday again, yesterday against him with White. I play knight f6, he plays knight c3, and now I decide to play e5. In our game yesterday, Prague played this move c5, but I decided to play the classic e5, which generally leads to situations which are pretty imbalanced with White potentially getting a classic reverse Sicilian with c4, e5 being played. Although White has an extra tempo. So Prague plays knight f3, I go knight c6, he plays g3, and now I play this move knight to d4. Now on first glance, you're like, wait a second, what? Anytime you bring out the knights, if you move knights forward, you're just going to hang a pawn. So white can just take the pawn and win the game. But not so fast. Because if white takes the pawn on e5, I have this move queen to e7, attacking the knight. If you move the knight back, it's a classic smothered checkmate with knight to f3. White cannot capture the knight. King has no squares. It's simply stuck. And it's gg, why not? So white has to be very careful. And actually here after f4, d6, white is maybe still okay after knight d3 and bishop f5. But black is getting the king out of the center very quickly. A lot of pieces are developed. And I think white actually has to play this move king to f2, which is already very, very questionable. So, Prague plays bishop g2. Now, I was a little bit surprised at the at the quickness or the speed with which Prague played these moves in the opening because knight d4 is a move that I've only ever played one time, and it was in a random title Tuesday against Neil Duba. Now, one thing people may not realize about online games or when I'm streaming is that all these games in title Tuesday and other events do make their way into the chess databases. So when you do play certain openings, they will show up if you use them in title Tuesday, which is one of the reasons that anybody who studies my games from these various events We'll probably notice that I have a bazillion games with either g6, a6, d6, any number of first moves which are not my main repertoire. Now, I'm fairly certain that that Prague probably had seen this game against Dubov, which is why he was ready for this variation. So he plays bishop g2, we trade the knights on f3, and now I play bishop b4. My idea is very simple. I want to develop the bishop, castle the king, and then play d6 down the road. So say white were to castle after castles, d3, d6. Already I have an open diagonal. If white plays a3, I can put this bishop on this long diagonal. And overall, the position feels very simple and easy to play, which is what you want in a very tense situation like this match. So, here Prague plays g4. Now, this is a move that I have looked at in the past. I actually looked at this over a year ago. I won't say for what event or when exactly, but fortunately, I had looked at this move some time ago, so it does not come as a total surprise to me. So, after g4, I play h6, stopping white from playing g5. If I play a move like c6, trying to build a big black center, white can kick the horse out of town, and after knight g8 and d4, white has great bishops on some diagonals. The queen is coming into the game. And black is lacking in development here with approximately six pieces on their original starting squares. So I play the move h6 to stop g5. Prague plays d3, opening up the diagonal for the bishop. I play c6, trying to build the big black center here and controlling both the e5 and d5 squares more importantly. So now Prague plays queen b3, attacking the bishop. And here I play this move, bishop e7. Now, I play this move after a six-minute think. Up to this point, Prague had been moving instantly. And this is a move that I knew was not the correct move. But because Prague was moving so quickly, I felt like, you know what? It seems reasonable. Just play d6, bishop e6, maybe pressure the pawn. And so I just played this move quickly, even though I was freestyling at this point, because I knew that Prague would be out of his preparation. And at the end of the day, you want to play chess. You do not want to play against Stockfish. So... After bishop to e7, Prague plays bishop e3. I play d6, targeting the pawn on g4. And now he shocks me by playing this move castles after about a 12-minute thing. Now, at this point, I'm feeling very good, as especially as Prague was thinking, because I'm up 14 minutes. And I thought that Prague had to play either rook g1 or h3. And in fact, when I spent the six minutes on bishop e7, the main line that I was calculating was rook g1. I thought I could go either knight d7 or knight h7. I wasn't sure which one was better, but I was probably going to play knight d7. And after castles, knight to c5, attacking the queen. If white takes the knight, suddenly these pawns grip the critical d4 square, and the bishop is staring at a closed diagonal, and the knight has no jumps because the square is covered by the pawns. So overall, I think black is probably doing fine here. And if white goes queen c2, I can now go knight to e6, stopping the pawn thrust in the center, and maybe playing moves like bishop g5, 
or knight g5 down the road and i think black should be fine so when prague was thinking for quite a while here i was starting to feel very good prague obviously out of his preparation and i was expecting him to defend the pawn with rook g1 or h3 and i would respond instantly with knight d7 but instead prague castles after a long think and here i sink deep deep into the tank using nearly 40 minutes before capturing the pawn now the reason i spent so much time is that when prague castle i thought this was not actually a great move specifically because of knight takes pawn but as i started thinking more and more the main line that i was calculating here was queen to c8 guarding the bishop and guarding the pawn but in this position after f3 let's just say bishop h5 rook takes g7 and bishop g6 it looks like i'm going to trap this rook with either bishop f8 or bishop f6 next move but after rook g1 here when i play bishop to f8 white can sack the rook with rook takes bishop pawn takes pawn takes rook and now white has a couple very attractive moves the best one is knight to e4 threatening knight f6 or knight to d6 here even rook takes b7 here and white is probably doing very very well with knight e4 next move and white has some great coordination black meanwhile has one two three four five pieces on their original starting squares and it is simply hopeless here so I spent about 10 to 15 minutes looking at queen c8, trying to make it work and being very, very unsatisfied with lines with f3. So then my next thought was, okay, let's see, can I develop in any other way? Now, what I would love to do here is play queen to c7, guarding the pawn. I can't move the bishop because I hang the pawn. So I'd love to go queen c7, guarding the pawn. And let's say white plays h3, bishop e6, rook g1. And I want to castle here. Now, if I could castle and not hang this pawn on a7, I'd already be better. But white can, in fact, take the pawn. And he is not going to be doing a bobby fisher because if i play b6 try and trap the bishop bishop takes pawn simply wins the game so i'd love to develop with queen 7 and bishop e6 but it's simply a little bit too slow so the next idea i thought of was maybe i can go queen a5 here and if white plays say rook g1 to guard the pawn maybe queen a6 here and if white plays say h3 now i can go bishop to e6 and the queen actually holds both the pawns on a7 and b7 here and black should be fine let's just say king b1 i can castle a7 isn't hanging d4 also not an option because then you would hang the pawn on c4 so it feels very very good if i can get this but intuitively as i was thinking more about queen a5 it just felt like after d4 here something bad is going to happen i'm very very slow here i need another move with queen a6 before i can develop the bishop now computer of course says i can go queen a6 anyway but after rook g1 followed by h4 it just feels really really scary here so finally after looking at all these variations i i came back to knight takes g4 and I thought that after takes rook g1, what about this move queen to d7? Now, the idea is very simple. Now, if white plays f3, for example, after bishop e6 and say rook takes g7 here, I can play b6, stopping the bishop from taking the pawn and simply castling out of the center next move. So as soon as I was able to notice this idea, I started spending my time looking at this variation. And in fact, it's what I did play. I took the pawn. Prague traded the bishop for the knight on g4. He played rook g1. Maybe white can also go queen takes b7. But after queen to c8 here offering the trade if white trades the queens with the two bishops and potentially a big black center black should be a little bit better and if you go queen to b3 here for example i think black can simply castle and after rook g1 i don't know if you go to h7 or h8 both moves make sense followed by bishop e6 once again black should be doing very very well so Prague plays rook g1 now the good thing about using all this time was that i calculated a lot of these variations and my next five moves i played pretty much instantly so i go queen d7 guarding the bishop guarding the pawn Prague plays d4 and now i play this move e4 now i was very proud of myself for this move but the computer actually thinks i can take the pawn on d4 and play something really dank like rook to g8 and maybe i'm okay but as a human when you see this move knight to e4 coming in you're very worried all these pawns are very very loose there's pressure on the g file and it just feels very very difficult to play but of course the computer says you can play f5 and you're just better for a mere human like myself this is not realistic so i play e4 here important move because i'm giving back a pawn but in the process after white takes this pawn on e4 now i can potentially castle because there's no pawn hanging on a7 since white has pushed this pawn which blocks the bishop so i'm feeling pretty good here basically if i can castle and keep the two bishops i should be okay so prague plays d5 of course i go c5 closing this diagonal down he takes on e4 and now i play bishop f5 attacking the knight i would love to castle here but after f3 i'm simply going to have to move the bishop and then hang a pawn on g7 and i'm down down a pawn here and probably in bad shape so i go bishop f5 attacking the knight prague plays knight g3 and now i play this move bishop g6 now this was a bad move i used eight minutes here now intuitively i felt like bishop h7 was the right move but then i started seeing the boogeyman seeing the ghost and worrying that after knight to h5 
g5 here maybe white could play f4 maybe knight g7 and i just was worried that after king to d8 for example trying to run the king maybe white has moves like f4 maybe h4 maybe queen c3 with some fossils lurking and it just felt a little bit scary which is why i didn't do it but pretty much as soon as i played bishop g6 and prague played bishop d2 i was very unhappy with myself because the main issue with the bishop being on g6 versus h7 is that if white tries to play the same ways in the game with e4 here I can probably just go g5 f3 and f5 and i think i'm completely fine in this position but in the game with the bishop on g6 it's not quite the same because after bishop d2 castles and e4 i can't play g5 here and if i try to play a move like f5 which maybe is okay white can take on f5 and suddenly the g7 pawn is hanging here and if i play a move like let's just say um uh, what's the move i was thinking of here if i play a move like what is the move something like bishop h7 now i was actually a little bit worried that maybe white could play f4 and after bishop h4 f5 this bishop on h7 is extremely passive staring at this pawn wall and even though the computer thinks it's okay for black it looks scary from an optical standpoint and if my bishop is on h also the other reason is if i go f5 here uh not f5 sorry if i play a move like even let's just say uh what was the move? rookie eight f3 for example and i play a move like f5 here white has knight to e2 and now the bishop is hanging on g6 and g7 will fall whereas if the bishop is on h7 all the way back here none of these ideas with tricks like knight e2 or knight h5 work because the bishop is not on this g6 square so I was very unhappy with myself at this point but I buckled down and I found this important move bishop h4 stopping white from playing f4 and f5 and building a pawn avalanche if white were to play f4 here I can trade the bishop for the knight and after rook takes bishop takes e4 black is probably a little bit better here due to the wooden shield in the center with this bishop and the weak king on c1 so Prague plays f3 trying to build his white center he also has a classic pyramid I play bishop h7 now unfortunately I'm going to waste time because if I go f5 again white can take or even go knight e2 and after bishop h7 there might be knight f4 and the knight is jumping to e6 here and it's very very scary to play so I played bishop h7 trying to get f5 but again I've lost the tempo I played one and then two versus going to h7 in one turn so Prague plays king b1 and now I decide to take the knight on g3 now this move is a blunder but only to a 3500 level stockfish I wanted to play f5 here but I felt that after takes 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 and queen c2 here I thought white is maybe a little bit better here in this end game with the queen trade rook is on a nice g file here and after say g5 I thought that maybe white can go rook f1 and f4 bishop on h4 a little bit out of play doesn't really have any scope on this diagonal probably I can save it but I felt a little bit unsure so then I decided to play for a more thematic idea with trading the bishop for the knight and playing f5 simply trying to trade the pawn on e4 and f5 if white were to play a move like rookie one this is a big mistake because after takes takes and rookie eight queen c2 and queen g4 white will lose something on this diagonal most probably it will only be a pawn but if you push a pawn you lose your queen and the game so I thought here either Prague will lose the pawn on e4 or he'll have to trade and once he trades suddenly the diagonal is open and I should be fine but for a 3500 level stockfish it actually thinks that white is very close to winning after this very unusual pawn sacrifice with pawn to e5 and the reason is that after pawn takes pawn white can go f4 shutting down this bishop on h7 and after e4 there's this incredible idea with bishop e3 attacking the pawn and after b6 and a4 the reason this is so bad for black is white simply wants to play a5 and open up the a file and bring the rook over now one sample line just to show you guys play something like queen b7 white goes a5 if you ever take on a5 after not bishop c5 sorry after takes queen c3 white will win this pawn on c5 or a5 and these two pawns in the center of the board are very likely going to be rushing up immediately so i can't ever really take and if i play a move like rook d6 here white can now trade the pawns on b6 and go king c2 and after say uh king c7 white can now go rook to a1 using the open a file and down the road let's just say i go rook c8 white even has ideas to reroute this bishop to c3 and e5 and white is probably winning this game now of course to us mere humans this is very insane in fact when i first heard this is winning my first thought was probably because white can go bishop c3 and bishop e5 but if white goes bishop c3 after king b bishop e5 and king a8 suddenly black is completely fine i think there's a good chance that black would win this game in human practice so to see this idea with bishop e3 and then playing a4 a5 is simply way too dank now 
during the post-game interview, I spoke about this idea with Bishop E3. It actually reminded me, of, it's a little bit different, but it reminded me of a classic game that was played in 1997 between the world chess champion Gary Kasparov and Deep Blue. Now, the position was a little bit different, but it was a similar situation where there were opposite color bishops, and Deep Blue put a bishop on E4. I believe it was something very similar in a way. It was something like, let me see if I can recreate the pawn structure here. I guess I, I probably can't, but it was something like... Um, how do I do it? It was, it was it was something like basically it was very similar except the bishops were were reversed. I can't I can't really show you guys at least not with the position in this game. So you'll have to go look it up. But as soon as I heard about it after the game, it reminded me very much of that classic game uh, that was played in 1997. It was game number two of the first Kasparov versus Deep Blue match. I'll put a link um, in the video so you guys can see it. It's a little bit different, but it's still the same kind of theme of a bishop blockading potentially a pawn, which you need to push forward to open up the scope. So. Again, this is winning for a 3,500 stockfish. For us mere humans, I don't think it's realistic to expect anybody to find it. In fact, I think if you were to ask Magnus and you say E5 takes and F4 is winning, he'd say, yeah, probably it's after E4. You go Bishop C3, Bishop E5, and with the active Bishop, probably there's some way to break through, but that would be wrong. So... Again, this is winning for a computer, but I don't think any human would find it. So Prague plays a logical move. He takes on f5. I play queen takes f5, king to a1, and now I go rook hf8, trying to provoke Prague to have to push the pawn. Because if white can, say, put this bishop on f4 down the road, there might be some pressure towards this pawn on d6. So when I go rook f8, I'm trying to provoke him to play f4, so the bishop no longer has scope on this diagonal. So Prague does play f4. I go h5, stopping g4. Because if white can get g4 in, suddenly after f5, white has these nice pawns. Now he can use the bishop behind the pawn chain with bishop f4, and there are going to be serious problems. Also, my bishop on h7 is simply awful. So I play I play h5 to stop g4. Prague plays rook e1. I go queen c2, and now he plays bishop c3. Now at this point, I know the game should be a draw, but I still have to be a little bit careful. So I trade the queens, and I play rook f7 here, and now Prague plays b4. If Prague were to play rook h1, for example, I can go bishop to c2, attacking the pawn. And after king a2 and g6, I'm going to be able to lock the bishop on f5 with the pawns holding each other and a classic uh, diamond hands formation, and the game should be a draw. So Prague plays b4, I trade, and now I go bishop f5, stopping the infiltration with e6, and again intending to play g6 and build this connection between the pawns and the bishop. Prague plays b3 here, and now I go king d7, king b2, and now I play rook e7, trying to exchange a set of rooks. If I don't exchange the rooks, this can get a little bit scary. One sample line is something like uh, rook h7, rook e1, and now white has a double stack. Maybe ideas like rook e6 to sack the rook, potentially, and create some threats towards the pawns on g6 and d6. Not sure if it's actually good, but if anybody has chances, it's white. So what I want to do is trade off a set of rooks by playing rook e7. Prague trades the rooks, goes rook e1, I go king d7, and now he essentially offers a draw with this move c5. Prague could have kept the game alive with a move like king c3, but in this position, I can simply go b6, stopping c5, and after, say, bishop to a3, I can play g6, connecting the pawns and the bishop, and I essentially just sit and wait here with rook c8, rook d8, or maybe even, maybe even I can go rook h8 to play for h4. White really has no chances to win the game. So Prague decides to simplify on the spot with c5. We trade the pawns. I go rook to e8 here. Prague plays this move rook e5. He could trade the rooks, but after takes, bishop a7, bishop e4, d6, king d7, bishop c5. After a move like g6, king c3, and bishop f5, due to the opposite color bishops, this should be a very standard draw. In fact, I can basically just sit around and chill forever, and there's nothing white can really do here with the pawns on the king side, and my king blockades the, the extra pawn on d6. So Prague plays rook e5, hoping for one last gasp. If I play g6 here, maybe white can play this move king c3. And after b6, bishop a3, it's still probably a draw. But I can't ever trade the rooks on e5 because now white has two connected pawns with the king marching up behind them. And this would be winning. So probably after bishop b1, bishop f5, the yo-yo with the bishops, it should be a draw. But there's no reason to allow this when I see a simpler way to end the game. So I decide instead to trade the rooks. Because after pawn takes rook bishop e4, white's king is one square too far away. If this king could get to d4, white would be winning the game. But the king is one square too far away. So after e6, I play king to e8, d6. Now I go bishop d5, attacking the pawn. Prague decides to play d7, ending the game on the spot. He could play e7 here. 
but after b6 bishop d4 g6 because these pawns are blockaded on the opposite color of this bishop the queening squares are white square is a white square white can't do anything one sample line is say b4 king d7 bishop e5 bishop f7 king c3 and there are many ways to draw probably the simplest is simply to go g5 and h4 trying to create the classic wide peepos on the opposite sides of the board and after king d4 just h4 takes takes king e3 probably here I can even go a5 and once again with the wide peepos there's nothing white can do to win and even if white were somehow able to capture both of these pawns for example it's still a draw here so let's just get to this position even this position is always a draw because I can always just yo-yo between both these diagonals with the bishop and if you're playing this as a 1000 player as long as you go bishop here bishop a4 d7 h3 wherever the white king is not you would never lose this position even if you were playing against magnus carlson so even if white gets to this with the two extra pawns it's still a draw because the pawns are blockaded on the light squares by my king and my bishop which is why prag decides instead to play d7 and after king d8 he plays this move bishop d4 now if this pawn were magically gone just to illustrate the point if there were no pawn on a7 white wins the game with bishop b6 because after I move the king white queens the pawn and it ends but here the pawn in a7 covers this b6 square and there are no other checks anywhere on the dark squares to win the game so Prague plays bishop d4 and offers me a draw I could have played on with bishop takes pawn but after takes king d7 now I have an extra pawn here but even this position is simply a draw due to the opposite color bishops and neither side can make progress so with that we draw both of our classical games and we will now be playing some rapid tie breaks tomorrow much like the first round it's the exact same format it'll be two games of 25 minutes with i believe a 10 second increment if i'm not mistaken i will be starting with the white piece in game one so we moved to tie breaks and as i said in the post game interview i've had one goal throughout this turn which is simply not to blow myself up in classical chess and i've been very very solid and so we'll see what happens in rapid of course i think i'm a favorite i don't know how big of a favorite obviously prague is a very strong player as he's shown both in this match and throughout many tournaments recently so it should be pretty exciting but I'm looking forward to it. And on that note, I hope you guys have enjoyed this recap. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already. I'll be back tomorrow after the tie breaks with Pratt. Hope you enjoyed it. See you guys. Bye.